Hey there, Centrones. Today we're going to talk about what synth company would I pick if I had to pick one? Hi, I'm Pure Ambient Drone. This is my channel where I vlog about synthesizers. Hit the subscribe button, tap the bell, keep up with all of my synth adventures. JamesDrone.com is the place to be to connect with me. Oh my goodness, man. You know what? I'm in such a good mood. Look at my Pac-Man up here. Look at it. Oh, can you hear that? I don't know if you, the mic's picking that up or not. The wifey got me that uh, for my birthday. I know, right? She also got me a Robbie the Robot, which uh, I don't have in here right now. He's so cool. He walks around and he twists, he lights up, he talks. And he talks in the voice of the Forbidden Planet, kind of like Robbie the Robot dude. Um, I think he was also in Lost in Space. Yes, he was. So it's pretty cool. Uh, so I had a great birthday uh, because I got a couple of toys. Yes, I also got a new synthesizer that's not in here yet. So you guys are going to be finding out about that any day now. Uh, but today I want to talk about synthesizers and brands. And uh, I want to do a disclaimer here, guys, because I'm reading this online in comments and hearing it in videos. First and foremost, this is my channel. I work for everything in here. And it's pretty darn hurtful to read things about myself that are untrue. Things like, hey, Pad gets free synthesizers to say nice things about them. No, that would be other guys, but not me, okay? And I don't know what those other guys are getting for what they're doing and who those other guys are, but it's not this guy. I am not getting anything for free to talk about synthesizers. I'm not getting paid by anybody, no money is exchanging hands here for me to talk about synthesizers. I talk about what I love and I love synthesizers. So I've always got something nice to say about synthesizers. And I will tell you this, as my disclaimer continues, I will say this, and that is if somebody is deliberately ripping people off and I've got proof of it and I've got knowledge of it, I will mention that on here. But for the most part, the synth companies that I deal with here, I am happy with and I am so happy with them. And it's why I bought them to begin with. Do I keep every synthesizer I ever bought? Do I keep every synthesizer I ever traded for? No, which brings me to today's topic. And that is, which synth company, if I had to pick one, would I stick with through the years? Now, you know, this is one of those hypothetical questions. If you could only eat one flavor of ice cream, would it be chocolate? Would it be vanilla? Would it be strawberry? Would it be a combination of all three? Okay, so for me, I'm just gonna tell you, it's obvious, sequential. I love sequential synthesizers, but why? You know, I used to have a bunch of sequential synthesizers up until about, oh, a few months ago when the, uh, you know, the crisis started in the world. And I started selling off a lot of gear uh, because I wanted to try new things. I wanted to, to experiment with my music a little bit. And I realized foolishly that uh, I was going to miss my OB6. I was going to miss my Prophet 6. I was going to miss my Rev 2. And I sold all of those. Now, obviously, if I was getting this stuff for free and I was being paid to talk about them and uh, my channel was being sponsored by Sequential in some way or another by paying me to talk about them, uh, well, I wouldn't want to be selling off the stuff that I'm talking about, right? Uh, I'd want to keep it in front of you like I have it now. Well, they're not back because I'm getting paid for this. They're back because I miss them. They're back because I paid for them. They're back because I love to use sequential synthesizers. So if I was hypothetically forced to pick a synth company forever and ever and ever, it would have to be sequential. And I'll tell you why. They not only have made some great synthesizers in the past, because I have a sequential uh, circuit six track behind the camera where you can't see it, only because I'm running out of space. Gee, I wonder why I'm running out of space. Um, they, they make and have made some really good synthesizers, and they have a lot of great features. I mean, think about the six track, okay? The six track has been around for many, 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 many decades, right? Okay. And uh, it's got six sequencers in it. Six sequencers. How innovative is that? And, you know, we're talking about Dave Smith. The man who invented MIDI? Come on, guys. I mean, how much better can you get than that? Now, to go on further, we have uh, arpeggiators, we have sequencers, we have built-in effects in these synthesizers, we have pure VCO in this one and that one, we have a complete digital mock-up synthesizer right here, we have a hybrid right here where we have DCO analog oscillators and then we've got a digital synth up here but it's a sampler the prophet x so you got the rev 2 you got the prophet 12 you got the ob6 you got the uh, prophet 6 
and then you got the sequential six track. You got the Pro 3 that he's got, uh, that he has just come out with here recently. He's got a lot of innovative synthesizers. I haven't even touched on the Pro 2 yet and other synthesizers, uh, like the Poly Evolver that I used to have. Beautiful, awesome synthesizers. And yes, I know I can go on. I've missed some synthesizers in there. There's plenty of nostalgic synthesizers that I could mention, but that's my point. If you go back in history and you look at sequential slash Dave Smith himself, you will find some incredible synthesizers that he has been a part of. Okay. And I love the sound of sequential. It's so warm, but it ain't so warm that it's muddy. It's so crisp, but it ain't so crisp that it's harsh. And it's got a lot of built-in features, and they really are worth the money that you pay for them. I should know, because I have sold off nearly all of my sequential gear in the past. And what did I do? I went back and bought them again anyway. So if that doesn't speak to you, I don't know what would. Now, like I said, nobody's paying me to say any of this stuff. And I really wish that people would be more informed before they talk about anybody's channel or any person, period. You really need to know your facts about how YouTube channels work. Now, wouldn't it be great? I mean, at the time of this video, I've got about 4,000 subs. And wouldn't it just be ludicrous for a company the size of Sequential or even Korg or Behringer to come up to me and say, hi, Mr. Small Channel. How about us uh, giving you, you know, thousands of dollars worth of gear uh, so that you can get a few hundred views on your video on it? Why would they approach me with that? Why would anybody come and talk to me like that? I, I don't know why they would. That's not that's not a very good way to spend your uh, your money or your gear on. That's not very intelligent. I, I mean, I have a background in business and I've owned lots of business. I own this business and I certainly wouldn't pick a small company to talk about me if I could afford a bigger company with more views. So, you know, I wish and I really actually I should be flattered that somebody thinks that, you know, companies want to hire me to be their spokesperson uh, and give me free gear to do it with the small amount of, uh, of viewership that I have at this point. That would be awesome. So I, I, I say this not to explain myself, but just to explain the situation for all of you out there watching. I work hard. I work very hard and I pay for all of my gear, all of my gear. OK, I either trade it or I buy it or I do a combination of the two. In fact, I just picked up another synthesizer that a local music store uh, got to me brand spanking new because I traded off something for it. And I'll tell you all about that when I'm ready for the reveal. And you guys will know about uh, that uh, synthesizer that's gonna be here in the studio as soon as I find some room for that. I guess I'm gonna be double stacking some things, right? So anyways, uh, Sequential makes some very, very awesome synthesizers. They are worth every penny. And uh, I call them flagships because everything that Dave Smith does, he does with loving hands. He uh, He's involved in this stuff. You can tell that the man really believes in what he is doing and he cares about it immensely. And just look at the six track. I know I keep bringing that up because it's, it's, it's just, man, I love the six track. And it is such an awesome synthesizer. And look how old it is. And this thing is still functioning. How many of the synthesizer brands do you have in your uh, studio today, in your possession, that you believe in 40 years is still going to be functioning uh, without a hiccup? Um, how many of you are confident of your gear that you have today? You don't need to name names. You don't need to even leave a comment on that. I just want you to think about that for a moment. That there's a lot of brands out there today because it is my opinion that many, many, many products today, we're not even talking about synthesizers, but many products today are being made with less care and less professionalism as far as quality goes than maybe say 30, 40 years ago. Uh, and, and you know, the, the irony of that is, is that tech, technology wasn't even as advanced as it is today, but it seems like quality in some cases have gone down, but not in the case of sequential. And one of the things I love about them is just a look in the field. The Prophet 12 is a beautiful synthesizer that is laced in this beautiful wood. Um, the uh, the Rev 2 and the OB6 have these beautiful wood sides. The, the Prophet uh, 6 is just absolutely gorgeous in its tray of wood. And then the, the, the Prophet X uh, I don't think it would have looked right with its uh, innovative uh, modern take on synthesis with being a sampler in a pure digital synthesizer. Uh, I think he made the right choice in its sleek, all black 
uh, look with, and, and he forgo the wood on that. So he's making some really good choices. He's not just making clones of his own products. And that is not a slam on Behringer, by the way. What I mean by that is, is that because I know I use the word clone, I want to be very clear because people like to jump on some of my words. Um, he is not copying himself. He is innovating himself. He is working off of what he's already done, and he is creating a bigger and better version of what he is doing. And in many cases, he is doing a complete 180 on his synthesis. The Prophet um, 6 is nothing like the Prophet X whatsoever. They are totally two different machines. Character-wise, the OB6 has this dirty, nasty, uh, unpolite sound Um the Prophet 6 is more of a smooth, buttery sound, okay? Uh, the Rev 2 has uh, DCOs, but an analog, uh, os analog oscillators, you know, that are digitally controlled. It's a beautiful sounding synthesizer with its own character. The Prophet 12 has this digital uh, character to it, almost like a metallic sound. You can use all of these in a palette as if a uh, artist uses his palette to paint with. Uh, then the Prophet X is a marriage between the Prophet 12, in my opinion, uh, that can also do sampling. And then it has the remake of the filter that was actually in the Korg Poly 6. It has an updated version of that filter. And uh, it sounds so beautiful running that synthesizer through that analog filter. Just absolutely gorgeous sounding. I've got some of the best uh, sounds that I've ever experienced coming out of the Prophet X using the uh, 8DO sound packs that they have released from the ARP 2600. Oh man, that is a beautiful sounding sound pack. And the Jupiter 4, just to name two of them, because, oh, and the, well, I have to name three. The Prophet 5, those are my three favorite sound packs. And, and look, they turn those uh, synthesizers like the ARP 2600, uh, the uh, Prophet 5, uh, they turn those synthesizers into eight note polyphonic synthesizers. So now instead of having one sound of an ARP 2600, one voice, you're going to have eight on the Prophet X. Now, are you going to be able to manipulate those sound packs like you would if you had the real synthesizer? You know, that's a crazy question for me to ask. And you know, the answer is absolutely not. But I only need to come close in many cases. And it brings me there. If I had a full ARP 2600, which I would love to have, okay, I probably couldn't get some of the cool sounds that the sound pack already has for me, which are a great starting point and fit perfect in any mix. And you can reuse some of these sounds with a few tweaks because you can tweak all of this stuff on the PX. I don't think people fully understand entirely, okay, what Dave Smith has created with the Prophet X. They heard the word digital in there and they immediately jumped on that and said, oh no, we're going digital. Listen, you've got to give this Prophet X another chance if you have if you have already made up your mind that there is something negative you found about it. But anyways, uh, I wanted to tell you that these are my, my uh, reasons, this is my short list. I've got a billion reasons why. Uh, I love working with sequential gear and um, man, uh, I just want to fill my studio up with it. But don't get me wrong. I love all synthesizers. I love Korg. I love what Korg is. I got a, I got a, a prologue over here. Man, uh, this thing is just gorgeous sounding. I love, they did a fantastic job. You guys know that the prologue, I have to mention this, the prologue is a um, full analog VCO 16 voice synth. That's just amazing. It's not a Prophet 6, okay? I'll tell you that. It's not a Prophet 6. It don't have the beef that a Prophet 6 has got. It don't have the beef that an OB6 has. It just doesn't have it. Believe me, that's why I had to go sequential for the beef, the bottom end. That's what I call the bottom end is the beef. But this thing has got a lot to offer anybody who wants to go that route. But um, I would definitely say that if you want some beefy synthesis, you need to go with the OB6 and the Prophet 6. Um, if you only had to pick one, it would be so hard to do. If I only had to pick one of the two, because I know this is going to come up in the comments. If I was forced to only keep one, it would have to be the Prophet 6. It is such an iconic synthesizer. It's so amazing. It's so incredible. It's such a beautiful sounding Sith. And it's an all-rounder. If I had to pick one of the synthesizers between the OB6 and the Prophet 6, 
it would have to be that one. And I don't know if I could pick one sequential synthesizer. Obviously, I can't. You guys see I can't pick one. Uh, because that would be the next question. Well, if you only pick one, it would be a tie between the Prophet 6 and the, Pro uh, the Prophet X. The Prophet X is so powerful. It is jack of all trades. So I'm thinking to myself, man, uh, if I was forced to one of these synthesizers, the Prophet X, because of its sa sampling capability, would probably have to be the one. Uh, but the, the, the Prophet 6 would be, oh, it would be surely missed. Anyways, uh, that's my take on it today. What do you guys think? Leave a comment below. As usual, you know I love you guys. So um, hit the subscribe button, tap that bell, and give it a like, give it a share. And until next time, keep calm and synth on.